The Story of Pandita the Novice In the distant past, there once lived a poor man, Mahadagata, who gave offerings of food to the Buddha Kasapa. As a result, his life was transformed and he became wealthy and was appointed the king's treasurer. At the end of his life, he was reborn in a celestial realm. He lived in celestial glory for such an immensely long time that when he was reborn again, it was in the dispensation of the present Buddha. There he was conceived in the womb of the daughter of a rich merchant, a supporter of the elder Sariputta. Now before the child was born, there was a day appointed for the naming of the child. The mother said to the elder Sariputta, Reverend Sir, confirm the moral precepts on your servant. The elder said, What is the name of the child? The mother answered, Reverend Sir, from the day that this child came into existence in my womb, those of this household who were stupid and deaf and dumb became wise. Therefore, the name of my child shall be Young Wiseman, Pandita Dharaka. The boy grew up, and when he was seven years old, he said to his mother, I desire to become a monk under the elder. From the day of his birth, the mother had had the strongest of feelings that she should never interfere with the wishes of her son. So she replied, Very well, dear child. And she invited the elder to her house and said to him, Reverend Sir, your servant desires to become a monk. I will bring him to the monastery. And so she prepared rich gifts and taking her son to the monastery, committed him to the hands of the elder, saying, Reverend Sir, give him the going forth. The elder Sariputta spoke to the boy about the difficulties of going forth, saying, The life of a monk is hard. When he would like something that is warm, he gets what is cold. When he likes what is cold, he gets what is warm. The boy replied, I will carry out your admonitions, Reverend Sir. Well then, said the elder, come. So saying, he wetted his hair, taught him the meditation on the first five of the constituent parts of the body, and gave the going forth. After eight days, the novice was ready to enter the village to collect arms. He was instructed by the elder Sariputta on the manner of walking, standing, sitting and lying down. But whilst the rest of the monks set off on the arms round, the elder remained behind to ensure that the empty monastery was in good order. And so when he and the novice set off, they did so on their own. As the novice proceeded with his preceptor, he saw a ditch by the roadside. What is that, Reverend Sir? That is called a ditch, novice. What do they use it for? They use it to lead water this way and that, for irrigating their grain fields. But, Reverend Sir, has the water mined or bile? It has not, friend. But, Reverend Sir, can they lead anything like this, which lacks reason, to whatever place they desire? Yes, friend. The novice thought to himself, if they can leave even such a thing as this, which lacks mind, to whatever the place they wish, why cannot also they that have mind bring their own mind under control and cause it to do the monk's duty? Proceeding farther, he saw arrow makers heating reeds and sticks over the fire and straightening them by sighting with them out of the corner of their eye. What are these men, Reverend Sir? he asked. They are arrow makers, friend. What are they doing? They are heating reeds and sticks over the fire and straightening them. Have these reeds a mind, Reverend Sir? They are without mind, friend. The novice thought to himself, If they can take reeds, which are without mind, and straighten them by heating them over the fire, why cannot also they that have mind bring their own mind under control? and cause it to do the monk's duty. 
proceeding yet farther, he saw carpenters fashioning spokes, rims, naves and other parts of wheels. Reverend Sir, what are these men? he asked. These men are carpenters, friend. What are they doing? Out of pieces of wood they make wheels and other parts of carts and other vehicles, friend. But do these objects possess mind, Reverend Sir? No, friend, they are without mind. Then this thought occurred to the novice. If they can take these logs of wood lacking mind and make wheels and so forth out of them, why cannot also they that have mind bring their own mind under control and cause it to do the monk's duty? Now the monk's duty is to attain arahatship, and having seen all these things, the novice said to the elder, Reverend Sir, if you would be so good as to take my bowl, I should like to turn back. The elder said, Bring it, novice. The novice paid obeisance to the elder and turned back. When he arrived, sitting down, calming himself, he thoroughly investigated with wisdom his body and his mind. Through the power of his virtue, far away in the heaven of the thirty-three, the seat of Succor, the king of the gods, showed signs of heat. Succor perceived the cause of this. The novice Pandita has given his preceptor his bowl and turned back with the thought, I will strive for the attainment of Arahatship. Therefore, I also ought to go there. Having said so, he went in person to the place where hung the rope for opening and closing the door and stood guard. There was not so much as the sound of a withered leaf in the monastery. The novice's mind was tranquil, and before his meal he knew thoroughly the nature of his own mind, and obtained the first three of the paths and fruits of enlightenment. Now the elder Sariputta thought, the novice is seated in the monastery, and I know of a house where I can obtain food to assist him in his preparation. So he went to the house, and the householders offered him a meal, and thinking the novice must be hungry, obtained food for him too, and hastened back to the monastery with all speed. Very early on the morning of that day, the teacher ate his meal and went to the monastery, and he considered within himself, the novice Pandita has given his preceptor his ball and robe and turned back with the thought, I will strive for the attainment of arahatship. Will he reach the goal of his religious life? Perceiving that he had obtained the three lower fruits, he considered, has he or has he not the necessary factors to attain arahatship? Perceiving that he had, he considered, will he or will he not be able to attain arahatship even before his meal? And straight away he perceived that he would, then the following thought occurred to him. Sariputta is hastening to the monastery with food for the novice and may perhaps interfere with his meditations. I will therefore sit in the battlement chamber on guard. So he went and stood in the battlement chamber and when the elder arrived the teacher asked him four questions, each of which the elder answered correctly. While these four questions were being answered, the novice attained arahatship, together with the analytical knowledges. Then the teacher said to the elder, Go, Sariputta, give the food to your novice. The elder went and knocked on the door. The novice came out and began to fan the elder with a palm leaf. The elder said to him, Novice, have your meal. But you, reverend sir, I have eaten, you eat yours. Thus did a child seven years old, on the eighth day after going forth, like a freshly blossomed lotus, reflecting on the subjects of reflection, sit down for his meal. Later the monks assembled in the Dharma Hall and talked about the novice Pandita, a seven-year-old boy who had not even completed his first arms round. The teacher entered and asked what they were discussing. When they told him, he said, the four great kings stood guard over the four quarters of the monastery park. Saka, king of the gods, kept watch over the rope of the door, and I myself, although a Buddha, was unable to remain in an attitude of repose, but went to the battlement chamber and stood guard over my son. Wise men who observed ditch diggers leading the water, 
arrow makers straightening their arrows and carpenters fashioning wood, meditate on these things and so obtain mastery over themselves and attain arahatship. And joining the connection, he instructed them in the Dharma by pronouncing the following stanza. Irrigators lead the waters, arrow makers straighten the shafts, carpenters shape the wood, those who are wise tame themselves. Thank you.